Hey guys. guys! Welcome back to our channel. If you are new here, my name is Alexis. And I'm Louis. And we make videos all about traveling and living in Switzerland. So if that sounds interesting to you, make sure to click the subscribe button and stick around. So, so many of you have watched our videos all about Swiss trains and boats in the Swiss transportation series. So we are going to add to that today because in some instances it might make more sense to rent a car or to drive if you're for a neighboring country. So this video is going to be all the things you need to know if you are planning on driving in Switzerland. So take this from someone who recently got her license in Switzerland. Driving is a little bit different here than the US for sure and there are some nuances I think even between Switzerland and the rest of Europe that you may not know. So we're going to go through all of those today. So I'm going to start with the basics I think just to, uh, to make it clear that uh, in Switzerland we drive on the right side of the road so this is like in the US this is unlike in the UK and Ireland and Australia. If you are in continental Europe, you'll only drive on the right side. In terms, and that's uh, the first subject for me, is just to know about the speed limits because we are much more sort of strict on the speed limits and also because of the cameras that you, you'll have, you might have some fines. So in terms of the speed limits, in cities, villages, it's usually 50, in villages sometimes 40 kilometers per hour. So outside of the villages, cities, it is 80 kilometers per hour. So if you are suddenly in the countryside, it's likely to be 80 kilometers per hour. And then in highways, it is 120 kilometers per hour. These three numbers are good to know because, and this is on the street sign uh, subject, we have one weird sign that Alexis is, loves <laughs> is that sign that we put on the screen and this sign indeed doesn't give you much <laughs> except that the past speed limit is no longer valid and basically the, the usual speed limit is valid. So if you were on the highway and it was 100 because there was road work or stuff like this, when you see this sign, you will be able to go at 120. So it's good to know these core limits because then you can get there. So it's important to know because it's not like Germany where it's no speed limit, go as no. fast as you yes. want. It's 100 doesn't apply, but you can go 120, yeah. but that's not written down anywhere. So these things are good to know. <laughs> In terms of the speed also limit for highway, in terms of the etiquette, I think it's really nice to, to, to drive in Switzerland because everyone respects that speed limit for the most part. Everyone goes at like 125 on the highway because you have so many cameras and it makes it less stressful than in New York or New Jersey where you drive at uh, any speed they want. In Switzerland, really don't be scared about driving in Switzerland. It's really peaceful. And I think you can uh, uh, talk yes. about this. I've bit, mentioned yeah. in many videos that I grew yes. up in New York City and that's where I've done predominantly all of my driving. Mm -hmm. And it's very different. The the behavior of the drivers in New York City, the, the, the speed limits particularly are respected. And it's a very, very small margin. Louis alluded to it and yes. said most people drive Five. 125. And that's because if you go 126, and those are kilometers, those are not miles. Mm -hmm. It's a really small margin mm -hmm. of when no, you will get a ticket 126 yeah. that's it you have much more of a still, but yeah. yeah but you have much more of a grace <laughs> yes. window at least in the US so people very much respect it I tend to mm -hmm. use cruise control a lot to make sure I don't go too fast so still on the signs and the road and what might be a bit different there are a few things to note there is that triangle and you'll see this triangle mostly on roundabouts we have a lot of roundabouts in switzerland and uh, the one thing to focus on in roundabouts is to look on your left if there is nobody that comes from your left then you can go with this triangle sign what it means is that you have to yield but if it's not a stop so if there's nobody you can just continue so that's one thing to know another particularity of maybe europe not only switzerland is the right priority so in lots of streets you have two sort of minor streets that will cross if you don't have a stop sign and especially if you have some sort of dotted line that are on the road then it means that you have to let the person who is coming from the right go so this is not like uh, the first one that stop will go there's none of this in Switzerland it's really that's right priority and this is still something that is uh, yet to, uh, to be learned I'm from working on it. Yes. <laughs> so that's another thing to just note and 
be a little bit more careful, go slowly. And one more particularity about driving in Switzerland is that you have to have your lights on at all times, except if you exit the car, of course, but uh, when you drive, you have to have your lights on, even if it's blue sky. This is new, I think it's been like a few years in Switzerland, but that's just something to know to have them on. So I'll jump in quickly with who can even drive in Switzerland, and likely I'm talking to you if you are from North America, or maybe if you're from somewhere else in Europe, because if you're European, this probably won't apply. So the rule in Switzerland is you need to have a valid license, obviously, but you also need to be at least 18 years old. So I'm pretty sure most of Europe, that's kind of the rule in general. Mm -hmm. You need to be 18 to drive, but I know in the US you can get a license before then. So even if you have a valid license and you're 16 or 17, you cannot drive mm -hmm. in Switzerland. This may or may not matter because that doesn't have anything to do with whether or not a rental car will even rent you something. But if you're driving in from somewhere else and you have a car or you know someone with the car, whatever, you need to be 18 years old to drive in Switzerland. Another thing that is important when driving in Switzerland, and this question comes up, a lot is about tolls and things like that. Yeah. It is very different than their neighbors, and good news, it's actually much, much easier for you. you and cheaper. And cheaper, say. for sure. You need what is called a vignette, and that is a sticker that goes on your windshield, and it'll just have the last two digits of the year, and that is 40 francs, and it is valid for the entire year, and you will not have any tolls in Switzerland on the highways, mm -hmm. on bridges, on tunnels, anything yeah. like that. You can just drive freely, so you can get it at most border crosses. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. So to enter Switzerland, you will need this if you're driving on a highway, but great news, it's 40 francs one time. The only bad thing is if you are here for three days, you need it. If you're here for three months, you need it. The price is still the same. It isn't adjusted, but it is 40 francs one time. Another subject that is important if you are going to drive in Switzerland is parking. So parking can be expensive in Switzerland. For example, some like normal parking when you just, it's a parking garage that can be quite expensive. So check what it is. Most parking will be on streets and they will be delimited by some, uh, some rectangles. You have three different colors. There's yellow. If you see yellow, don't park. This is private or this is reserved for, for something. This is just a, a default, don't park on yellow. In Switzerland, you might get fined uh, or you might not see your car anymore. <laughs> then you have blue. Blue is indicating that you can park for a certain amount of time. Most likely it is going to require, and you can actually see this here, just in terms of how it works, you basically, and you'll have this in your rental car, I think most likely when you rent a car in Switzerland, otherwise, I think even in Europe you have these things, you can say, okay, I arrived at 9.30 and then uh, you have to be um, uh, here for an hour or, or two. One thing to note on this is that you cannot just like come back to your car and change the hour little by little. You can try this, but sometimes you have some controls that know where the, the, the car was and will still find you if they're annoying. So that's just something to, uh, to note. Otherwise, you have the white color and the white color is most likely going to require you to pay at a parking meter. One thing that I like now in Switzerland and if you have access to data, you have different apps. For example, Parking Pay is an app that knows kind of where all the different uh, zones are and then you can pay on this and, uh, and kind of do it on your phone. Otherwise, you have a parking meter. In the subject of the cost of uh, driving in Switzerland. This is something to take into consideration, the parking. It might make sense if you are a family and you're going to be packed in a, in a car with four or five people. That might make sense versus having five train passes. That definitely is something to take into consideration, but the parking is still something that is a little bit annoying. It's, uh, it's not always easy to find parking in Zurich or in Geneva, and it's going to be expensive also. So that's just something to keep in mind. So now we're gonna talk about driving in the mountains where I know a lot of you are interested in driving when I, the few times I've driven in the mountains without Louie have had a few hiccups. So it's important. So pay attention because driving in the mountains is very different than driving on a highway wherever you're from. Yes. So in mountain driving, one thing that is important is having snow tires. In Switzerland, you need to have snow tires. So if you come with your car some, from somewhere else, you'll have to have your snow tires. Otherwise, I think rental cars will have these snow tires. But this is something that insurance will not cover uh, whatever you have if you don't have snow tires on. Another thing is in mountains, 
driving winter or summer just know that we have oftentimes narrow roads so it's not your American highway with uh, plenty of space you are going to be still able to cross but it's always going to be a bit stressful and uh, I'm used to it but it's, uh, it's tough when you are used to wider roads to, uh, to come to Switzerland so that's also something to, to keep in mind. Another thing on mountain uh, driving I love doing road trips in Switzerland do sort of these mountain passes that are in the center of the country and in the Alps, the Furka Pass, Newfoundland, lots of different passes that are beautiful. But one thing to note is that they are mostly open in the summer. So if you're going to drive in the winter, they are likely to be closed. You have to check them and you can just type on Google and, uh, and, and check the status of these passes. One thing on these passes also is if you are planning to do your road trip, don't trust that Google is going Going to make you take better road because oftentimes it's just much longer so if you want to have your itinerary in this you should just put itineraries with the, these different steps so say that you want to go from Geneva to Zurich but you want to pass through the Furka Pass, the Newfoundland Pass and, uh, and, and uh, other places to make sure that it's not going to make you take either the highway that is longer but quicker or also tunnels that are also going usually below these mountains so this is something that is worth it but just uh, to, to make sure that you plan this correctly so hopefully this never happens but if you get pulled over by the police for whatever reason that's you unlikely need, uh, in it's, Switzerland, it's unlikely but if you're speeding <laughs> you really quickly flash, but okay yeah. But let's say something <laughs> happens and you get pulled over by the police. Unlikely to happen, but if it does, good to be prepared. You will need to show them your license. So one thing there, your license needs to be in English, French, German, or Italian. It needs to have one of those languages on it. Otherwise, you need to get an international license, which is basically an official translation of your license. And you also need to show them the registration. This will be in your rental car and it looks like this. But if you get pulled over by the police in Switzerland, they're very nice, don't worry. It'll be fine. You just need to show them your license and this. And then worst case scenario, maybe you'll get a ticket. But try not to do that. Okay, so if you have made it to the end, thank you so much as always for watching this video. We hope this video is helpful and our goal is always to alleviate any travel anxiety you might have and better prepare you not add to it. So hopefully this is helpful and now you feel ready to drive in Switzerland. If you enjoy our content and find it helpful, you can consider buying us a virtual coffee at the link here. As always, if you have any other questions, any videos you'd like us to make, please leave them in the comments below. But that is it for us, guys. We'll catch you next time. Bye, guys. Bye. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more videos like this, please make sure to like and subscribe. We'll see you soon.